Hey there, Chris Kellogg with 123 Muse here, and we're going to show you our new RMK or Responsive menu kit. Now this kit is made up of lots of different parts and we'll show you them in a minute but just to give you an idea of the kind of thing you can do I've set up a little demo site here and we can see that we've got a normal Muse menu and then as I bring it down to mobile we can see that it flips over to a familiar burger icon and we have a slide out menu here with rollover buttons and we have this nice little animated icon here and we can let's switch it over to let's go to a uh, right menu and you can see so it works left and right and it's got a full page width and it responds to the pages breakpoints. So let's take a look at this menu kit in practice. So jumping into Muse here we can see the different parts that uh, make up this menu kit and that's why we're calling it a kit because it's not a single widget. So running from the top left here we have this menu overlay. Now that's activated when the button's clicked and it puts that semi-transparent overlay on the content so you want to set the content above that. Then we have this this widget here. Now this actually activates the off canvas menu. So this puts the menu off to one side of the canvas and then brings it back on. And it's easy to change how far you want the menu to come onto the page by just dragging this bar here. So that will set, you can see here that that's going to set to 250 pixels. And if we set it wider, it would come out wider. This also controls whether the menu is left or right. So that's all controlled there. Then we have this menu, the actual menu itself. Now this is made up of a text rectangle in Muse, so a text block, and then the content is pasted into that text block. Now the reason why we do that is because if we just use the rectangle, it makes it more difficult to control the content coming in and out. So our method of doing this is having this text block to give it a graphic style and then to um, copy and paste the content into it. And we'll show you how you do that in a minute. This is just uh, an icon that shows up in the mobile view. So in the desktop view, you wouldn't see that. You just see this other version of that icon there. And we also apply a graphic style to that called push, which means that when the menu opens up, that's pushed as well. The icon here, this is a, a, a widget in, on its own, so let's just take a look at that. And this is a really cool little icon, uh, cool little widget, because not only does it activate the menu and work with these other parts together, but we've also built in some animated icons for you, so it'll uh, rotate, it'll create the X, or a left arrow, or a right arrow. Let's just take a look at that, one of those arrows. If we rescale the page here, we see that now we get this nice animated arrow. So moving back to the icon here, you can see that we can switch that on and off. Now, why might you want to do that? Well, you may want a menu icon to sit top left, top right, um, and for it to stay in place while the menu opens up. So you can switch that on and off. You can choose a simple burger icon. That's controlled by the text tool, so if we select that, you'll see that's a very simple icon. It doesn't animate or anything like that, but you can control its color and everything with the text tool, so that's useful. And then finally, if we chose the custom image, we can see that the custom image loader loads up and you can use it, SVGs, PNGs, JPEGs, and so on. So that's how that particular widget works. Let's just take a look at the graphic styles now. So if I pull up the graphic styles, we can see here, uh, oh, I had them off to the side there, didn't see them there. So we can see that this uh, background here um, is called wrap this. So the widget's looking for that particular style so it can wrap the menu in the content. We can see that the this um, graphic here has got a push graphic style and that will mean that it operates with the menu to push left or right. So any content that you wanted to actually push with the page, you would wrap it in this push graphic style. A couple of things to note here. 
the overlay needs to be off the page, top left, and the menu widget controls here need to be off the page above and set um, at top left. And we also want to make sure that the resizing is switched off. Now the menu itself needs to be um, have resizing switched off and we're also going to pin it to the top left or to the top right, whichever way we're working. The menu icon itself, we want to put, put that in place and then we want to use a left or right um, pinning so that it stays in place. With that said, that's basically the menu units. Let's go ahead now and take a look at building our own menu. So first off, let's go ahead and make a new site. And I'm just going to leave the settings all the same. And let's go into the master page. So in the master page, we're going to set up three breakpoints. I'm going to set one up at 768 and then one at 320. Okay, so we've got our three breakpoints here, and basically that's just covering desktop, mob, uh, tablet, and mobile. So it's a, just a, a very basic set of breakpoints. Now let's go to our library and do a search for RMK, which is our um, responsive menu kit. We can drag the full menu kit on, but in the desktop, what we're going to do here is we're going to pull in a demo menu. So let's, uh, let's have a look. I had it down here. So we've got a sample desktop menu. Here we go. So let's drag that in place. And let's move that. Because it's full width, it um, is stuck to the side so you can see it moving there. Right, so we've just got one menu button in there. So let's switch that to a manual menu and add another couple of items to it. So I'm gonna add them this side. So we're gonna add four units for argument's sake. Okay, now that's fine, but this menu is going to show up in all of those. So what we want to do now is select it and set it to hide um, to, sorry, let's go into this breakpoint here and right, there we go. Okay, so we're done with our desktop menu. Now let's go into our first tablet menu. So we'll go in there and go into our library and go and find the RMK again now and grab the full and we'll drag that in place. Okay, so whilst that's just loading up, let's just pop this in place here. And let's just make sure that this is set to zero, zero positioning. So X and Y, zero, zero, we want it right on the top there. And we'll set that to zero as well. Okay, so everything's in place there. Now let's just go and check the mobile, right, so that's moved out of the way there. So let's just move this back in place here as well. In fact, what we'll do here is if we select this and say, copy size and position to all to 320. So we're going to 320 and it's all in place there. And then if we go into the 460, we'll do, we'll do uh, what we'll do then is select that all again. And yeah, let's do 960. But in the 960 now, with that all selected, we want to do hide in breakpoint. So that menu is now not showing in the 960, so the desktop. Now let's preview, let's hope, hope this works now. Preview page in the browser. And as we scale down, we get our menu and hey presto, there it is. Okay, so everything's working fine. There's a bit weird there. Let's take a look what's going on there. Let's just make sure that, let's just put that above there. That's above there, yep. And that should be all fine. Make sure that that's okay. Let's try that again. So with that selected, we can see, there we go, everything's working fine. Okay, so that was 
pretty painless to build that responsive menu. If we go into our 7681 our tablet now, we can do a couple of things. Let's change this to this uh, nice blue color. And with our menu, because this is just a text box, we can change this as well. And maybe uh, change its fill to, let's say, uh, 90. And we can change the menu icon to the set that transparent. And we just want a little bit of gray on the back here just so that that menu stands out. There we go. Now let's preview that. And we can see that as we scale down, a menu pops up and we can open it up and it's all working great. Now, what if we wanted that to be on the right hand side? Well, that's very straightforward. We can take the icon move it into place here, switch it over to uh, the right hand side there, go into our widget, switch it to a right hand menu, leave everything in place so you don't have to move that over to the right. And now if we preview that, let's scale down again, and we can see now that our menu opens up on the right hand side. A couple of things that we want to do to make life easier for ourselves. If we select all of this content and go into our layers, let's create a new layer and let's call that nav and we'll call this one content. And we'll select all of that and right click and go to move to layer nav. And then we can lock the navigation down. Now the great thing with that is, is once it's set up, we can lock it so that it doesn't modify, we don't break it and move it around, but we can also hide it. So when we're working in a page, if I went into this page and I was working in it, I wouldn't necessarily want the menu to show up. So by switching it on and off, so if I went into, let's say, add a breakpoint here to 76, sorry, 768, we can see that the menu's there. We don't want that because we're working, even though it's not going to, we can't grab it, so we can just switch it on and off there. So that's just a tip for productivity. So there's lots you can do with this menu. You can modify uh, the content uh, very easily. And let's go ahead and take a look at how we do that. Let's go back into our master here. And if we unlock, unlock the menu and we select that text box, you can see that it is actually just a Muse text box. And it has that graphic style applied to it, wrap this, which um, means that anything inside it will move with it. And we do that because a, a rectangle, a normal rectangle um, in Muse, if you put content in it, it's difficult to ensure that Muse will consider that content as being inside that rectangle. So by using a text block, we can copy and paste the content inside. And I'll show you just exactly what I mean there. If we remove these buttons, I'm just going to paste that onto the page there so you can see it. This is just a text box. So you can see it's a text box there. And we've set the padding to 20 pixels, I think. We've set up the text, we've set up the hover state, and then we've used a rectangle here with a wrap. So we've pasted it in. If I actually just show you exactly what I've done there. So I'm going to copy that out, uh, cut that out, and then if I go put my cursor in front of the text there and paste it back in, you can see that we're using a left aligned wrap and we have an offset of 10, so then that pushes that text away, so it creates that nice button. Um, and because it's, uh, we can, because it's using transition states, we can change that to whatever we want. So that's not a menu button or a um, the uh, composition button, this is just text, so you can do a lot with that. Now, currently, this widget doesn't work with Muse menus, so the, the menu widget creates a, an error that we're looking at, but this is a good way of building menus anyway because you have a lot more flexibility with it. So by having this content here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tick it, click into my text box, make sure that I am right at the top, let's make sure there's no spacing here, I think there's some spacing set up here, so we'll set the padding to zero, and make sure my cursor's in there now, yeah, that's nice. Okay, so let's cut this out, click in, and then paste it in. So now that text hasn't rendered yet, but it will do in a minute, if we hit preview, we will see that that text content is actually in there. 
And then we can just go in and add additional units. So I'm just going to copy that and just V, V. And then we can modify those. So the, the workflow for this is to create your buttons and then copy and paste them in. And you can see that very quickly you can build up that menu. But the great thing is you can also move content around within there. So I could move these all down. And then I could put some other content in there. So let's say this was a fly out for a profile, a person's profile, and you might want a nice image at the top then we could put a rectangle on the page, uh, set it to 100%, then give it a stroke, a white stroke fill there, and put that in white as well, and then cut that out, and then we will go uh, here, but I'm going to move it up into place here, and then in our text, I'm going to center that and then we've got a nice profile image. So if we hit preview now, and we resize this, we can see now we've got that, um, that circle in there. So this is a really good way of being able to, to build menus. You could put, uh, you could copy and paste widgets in there. You could do all sorts of things with it. So that's our responsive menu kit widget. Very useful. Um, very easy to set up and very flexible. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask us. And if you need any more training on this, please feel free to ask as well. And thanks for watching.